Right, um, we'll get started again. Um, this is Mark Suter talking about using a wiki for documentation. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? I pretty much can't see you, as you've probably guessed for most of the speakers who can't see their questioners. The title, obviously, does anyone recognize the lazy? Does anyone not recognize the phrase lazy? So it's the Pearl quote. We've actually spent, or I've spent, and certainly the company I work for has spent a lot of effort making the wiki work. They aren't easy. You don't just put them in and leave them alone. There is a lot of work in making them work. The rewards are quite substantial in having them there, but laziness is definitely doing a lot of work to save work. So you end up doing less, but you certainly don't avoid the work. Large is obviously different for different people. I work for effectively a services company and we have contracts with large government departments in Australia, defence, immigration and so forth. We have many thousands of desktops. We run a service desk that you can ring even at 3 a.m. on New Year's Day. They take calls for any IT related matter, especially, and this is of interest for the wiki talk, we take talks, we take questions about things that we don't have anything to do with. So if there's a printer out of paper, that's us. Even though we don't know where the printers are, we don't know what type of paper you use, that's us. So we get the call and effectively then farm it out to whoever's job it is. And we use our wiki to document all of that. My particular bent is a gateway. So everything in and out of the department goes through our little beast. There is a lot of paperwork to get that piece of paper. That piece of paper up there, the statement of compliance, that comes from ultimately the, uh, well, the Australian government and there is a huge amount of paperwork that we don't have any physical paper for. It's all in our wiki and that's but our big success really. Hopefully this slide is redundant. Does anyone want me to go into what it is? Does anyone in this room not actually know what a wiki is? I included the slide because I needed 20 minutes for the slides and I didn't want to talk to an empty room. So anyway, does anyone not recognize the first example I've given there? Okay. That is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, wiki. It's a thing called the Portland Pattern Repository. It's perhaps less relevant now, but there's a huge amount of material in there that's still being updated. And things like, uh, for example, my quote at the beginning from laziness, that's, I took that from the Portland Pattern Repository. So anyone here not actually have a wiki that they use day to day or use it regularly for whatever project or work they've got? What do you use instead, if there's a question I can ask? Back to the audience. For work, I use, for work we use uh, Basecamp and, yeah, mostly Basecamp. Well, that's, and there's, it's wiki-like features, if I'm not mistaken about Basecamp. It's not a wiki per se. Anyone else have anything they use in preference to what I think I've already hopefully spoken about what we use as a wiki? I'm just curious. Well, Mark, as you uh, probably should know, being in Unisys, SharePoint gets used by a lot of people, and that's not really a wiki or a sharing <laughs> of anything of any point. Yeah, to the point it doesn't share. Certainly, okay. Um, so... That was pretty much very few people, and that's very comforting. So that first site, obviously, Google, talk to your IT department if you're not the IT department, if you have an IT department that's more than one person. We ended up using a thing called DocuWiki, links down the bottom there. But the most important piece of advice I give about picking your wiki is you have to know how to drive it. And I mean that both as a technical and as a business. So... In some organizations, the wiki you need has to support really complicated visual theming and has to look really pretty. Most of them can be made to look very pretty, but in some organizations, that's the only thing that really matters. And the fact that it's a wiki is almost secondary. In other organizations, you will have incredibly detailed people who, for example, they will hate your project or hate your idea because it doesn't support C++ syntax highlighting. 
So you really have to pick the one that sk suits the skill set, not only of the people who are looking after it, but also the people using it. There are ones, obviously, that come with full WYSIWYG text editors. There are some wiki, there's a couple of wikis I saw that pretty much work by giving the person a Word document, having them edit it, and then upload the Word document. Now that sounds truly obscene, and it does actually use the you know Microsoft Word document format because of the tool set that the people they have are familiar with. Generally, I'd recommend you use the plain text ones, so that literally the human edits plain text, but that's my personal bent, and obviously your organization is yours. A few simple advice here for the large, like the large side of the thing. Pick an easy host name. I've seen a few that literally the host name is some monstrous thing that if you didn't bookmark it or you don't have the email that you were sent six years ago announcing the project, you'd never find it. In our case, it's wiki.domain, so for us it's pretty easy. Given that it's large organizations, enterprise type deal, get the authentication on at the very beginning. With, in our organization, it's just AD. So there's a large existing AD system. We just authenticate to it. We use all the groups in AD to control any authentication. If someone comes to us and says, oh, my team should have access to my section only, no one else should be able to edit it, and no one else should be able to read this section, I come back to them and say, okay, give me a couple of AD groups. And most of the time, they say oh, our, our group's AD group is such and such. But whatever you do, don't reinvent the wheel. You want this thing to be easy, you want it to work, and you want people not to have a reason to hate it. And one of the reasons why people hate systems is I have to remember another password, or I have to do something else that's complicated. As far as you can, be technically permissive. So what I mean by this is don't try and have very complicated ac access control lists. Don't, by default, set things up that these three people can edit. That is sometimes necessary, and when it is, you do it. But for the biggest advantage, and the thing that really makes wikis work, is someone else is just reviewing some content and sees a spelling error. I mean, this hopefully should be preaching to the converted here, but you see the spelling error, you fix it, and you've gone. You don't. There's no process, there's no complicated work to get the simple fix done. One thing that we've done fairly safely is made very well known the fact that we have all the revisions. So if someone makes a bad edit, you can reverse it. Nothing particularly new, I hope, to this audience, but saying that to your end users, to all the people who are going to be controlling the content and working with it, letting them know that it's safe to go. Letting them know that if you make a bad edit and you destroy someone's horribly precious work, then leave it alone. You know, don't worry about that. Don't have that stop you. Leave that aside. Leave that alone and go forward. Make the edit. For better or worse, you generally have none of the issues that, say, Wikipedia or any sort of internet-facing organization may have. Our wiki is completely internal, and most of the sort of organizations that you want to deploy them in, they generally don't even think about making this stuff on the internet. So they're the ones that I want to see do this. I mean, obviously, the organizations like, you know, all the free software projects, they're going to have completely open ones. Some of those, authentication is less of an issue. You want to be able to have people submit anonymously. That's entirely a valid decision. For the large organizations, I'd almost guarantee that authentication will be essential at some point, and so you should go there. The final thing to do with the pilot and the minimization, that was fairly important for us. People will find a reason to reject things, and this is change management 101, but we originally had a small technical team, all sat within easily easy sound voice of each other. We made quite a few changes. We set it up, and then over the next few weeks, months, quite a few things changed. Like we changed the visual appearance of the thing com completely. We rearranged things quite a bit technically under the hood. When we ended up going larger, so in this case, all the well, well over 100 people in the IT support section, those people all saw a consistent thing. 
It's now 18 months or so since it went to the largest audience, and we haven't changed much. Like We've really kept it very, very simple compared to what was originally. There are very few surprises, and most of the changes have been little things added. We haven't changed anything. There's nothing that's been jarring, and that, again, helps. One of the things that you want to have, and this is where I mentioned the skill set earlier, all of these ideas here we've done where I am, and I'm happy to answer questions about any of them, but as much as you need to pick the right one for your users, you also want to pick the tool that you have the local skills for. If you have software, say for example, SharePoint, I've seen that work very well when there were some very good admins who when people came to them with, can we, their answer was, I'll do it or I'll figure it out. And when they said no, it was for very good reasons, both technical and business. The last thing you want is for the people supporting your wiki, or any form of system for that matter, but a wiki in particular, to be able to know that it's your idea is a good idea, but then be stumped as to how to do it. So that's one of the biggest things that kills SharePoint, in my mind, that people can't do anything with it that they want. This is just me showing off. If you can read that, it's all very boring. This is one of the things we added to our wiki. There's a little thing on the side. People can type in usernames, groups, anything in AD, and they get a quick result out. It's more an example of what you do with your wiki. Our business case was to put everything together, and that's what you end up doing. Hopefully, this should be very, very simple idea, but that's literally all we said. I said, look, can I go and spend time doing this? We started out very small. We didn't buy any extra hardware. We used, obviously, free software, and we just did it. The larger adoption that happened in our organization almost happened by mistake in that we had, when I started out, I had no intention of having this be effectively things that's our company now has done bids and has done other work. They mention the wiki. They literally mention it at a high-level meeting when they're asking for new business, saying, hey, we use a wiki. It's become that much of a success that it's now almost unthinkable that we don't have it. But when we started, it wasn't even on the cards. It was simply put it all together. Obviously, you have one place. So we have a very large group of people. The service desk I mentioned, as you can probably imagine, it's not everyone's favorite job to answer phones at three in the morning, so those staff don't stay. They often go to other teams, well, less often than we'd like, but we always get new staff, and certainly there's several a month at least. By having everything in one place, you don't have the exchange of bookmarks where you start working and then someone else says, oh, here's my bookmarks, have fun. We ha I work in a very technical team. We had, some, we had new starters. We just say it's in the wiki. Literally, it's in the wiki is almost a joke because if it's not true, then the next question is when will it be in the wiki? The main thing that came to our interest with regards to the wiki is the second point there. We have a huge amount of documentation for gateways you have to have. You have to literally have a piece of paper that says that we will tie our shoelaces when we walk into the building. That, uh, and that's actually not entirely, that particular example is a joke, just in case anyone was wondering. But we do have to have, for example, an explicit document that says that when a user, when an administrator leaves, that we will delete their account. Like, even though it's in the government standards that we're meant to adhere to, we literally have to have a piece of paper that says, yes, we will do what the manual in section 4.3.5 says we will do. And so there's a lot of that documentation and the temptation, and I've seen it in other gateways, where they write all this documentation when they start, they put it on the shelf, and the only time it gets touched is when they have to go for recertification, when they have to go to the government again and say, hey, we're good, we're doing the right thing, there's our documentation. We have put all of our low-level documentation, all of our standard operating procedures in the wiki 
And when they've changed slightly because the vendor upgrades their product or our client's requests change or things like that, it's updated. It's not stale. Also, our technical team, rather than having emails flick around or chatting about ideas, we do that. But you put documentation in the wiki early. With SharePoint and other bigger systems that are more formal workflow systems rather than wikis, there's a big temptation to never show version 0.2. It never gets off the ground. And you then come with version 1.0, your first version out to the larger audience, and you get all this negative feedback. Or you get all these criticisms, you go, oh, if only I'd known. Whereas with the wiki, because of the way you start, there's no barrier to entry. You just start doing it, and then when you have it ready, you can slap stickers on it to say, hey, it's ready or you can slap a thing on a say draft, it's all very easy and not tied in. The final one, it's pretty awesome. We have all these new staff. When that call comes in about the paper lacking in that photocopier, there is a wiki article. They literally search photocopier paper or they name the building or the whatever. They search and there's an article that comes up that says what you do. We have that as a rule. Like we tell the people who answer the phones that you should search, even if you know the answer. Even if you know that the job is, okay, add a paper, we'll just log the job with company X. You look at the wiki and it says, ah, oh, don't log jobs with company X today, inform the customer that. So we actually have situations where you can update the documentation and then the behavior changes. So the very thing that ISO 9000 promised, we've actually got there in a very real concrete way last real slide is about culture. In a wiki, the person who owns the document is everybody. Hopefully this should be perfectly valid in this audience. When I say that that function is horribly written and that thing's going to crash, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. That sentiment, people feel that way. People genuinely take an edit to be a personal affront. You know, how dare you edit my document? I wrote it. It was perfect. Even if I corrected a spelling error or added a step that you overlooked because it normally doesn't need to get done, making that is very difficult to change once you've got it wrong. So make it very explicit and don't have anything to stop someone saying either way. So some documents do say up the top, for example, this document can only be edited by so-and-so. Let them do that, but make it so they have to do that, so explicitly. Getting a little bit out of time. Champions, change management champions, it's a fairly common idea, but the technical people are presumably going to be us, but the business ones, the guys who are actually going to make it work for you, are the managers who will or not necessarily managers, but the people who will use it and just talk about it. And that is very hard to force, but when you find them, they will be the most annoying user you've got because keeping them happy helps you. When that person has a problem, the faster you fix it, or more to the point, normal service management, keep them happy without being unrealistic, that definitely helps. And we've got quite a few of those, annoyingly, quite a few of those at the moment. I'm sort of running out of time, but very, very quickly to do with the wiki. Everything that goes into the wiki is pretty much or everything. Sorry, we put everything into the wiki. The only things we don't put into the wiki are the things that have the lot of lawyers get involved. So our high level policy documents, the ones that seriously get into trouble legally and our you know, legal contracts and so forth. But the one thing I'd say is put everything in the wiki, even if it's just a link or a copy or something saying, yeah, this is the unofficial copy, go there for the official one. I've sort of mentioned it throughout, but literally, if something's not on the wiki, it, my work, it's bad. We all have documentation, and pretty much we've got uh, a couple of weeks ago, over Christmas, while I was away, one of the newest service desk agents, he'd been there, I think he'd been there less than two months, he edited a couple of documents. And it wasn't, like literally he would have been on uh, the phones early in the morning and 
he edited some documents that he needed fixing. And it was all pretty much nothing special, which was really, really cool. And finally, <laughs> we are having to upgrade. I pretty much mentioned all of those. The last point about growth, it's pretty hard to explain that, but I hope you know what I mean. Obviously, the slides are there. You saw me download them, I think. I think I've pretty much run out of time and I'm holding you back from food. So are there any questions that people really want to ask? I see hands. I see hands there and there. It is afternoon tea time, so if you want to rush away, that's fine. But we will take a few questions. Hey, if I come closer to here, I can actually see. Um, so we've got a wiki thing at work. Um, and I agree with everything you've said. I think it's fantastic. There's some additional challenges that you haven't actually covered. I don't expect you to solve all our problems. Um, I'll just give you how many have I got? Four. And you can pick which ones you think are easy, are easy wins. We have problems with duplication, mm -hmm. which is a function of miscategorization. Um, we have a problem with um, documents that are getting old and nobody really knows whether they're right or wrong anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and a particularly insidious problem that we have is that we're all geeks and we can't really decide on which platform we want to use, so we've got documentation in several different documentation systems. All of them were supposed to be the, the documentation group. system. None of them seem to be actually that. That's it. Oh, it was three. Okay, so you've got the ontological problem. Where does it go? What happens if it goes in three places? Basically, we have... The thing that drives our wiki is search, and so you get multiple search results. Pretty much the service desk agents, the, the end users of, I'm thinking of now of the service desk portion of the wiki, they note the fact that there's a duplication. There's a little discussion tab we've added. They say, hey, this is a duplicate of such and such. There's actually three or four guys whose job it is just to manage the knob knowledge base. They deduplicate. Um, so basically, yes, it's hard. Ontological, you know, the Everyone knows what ontologies are? Like Yahoo was yet another hierarchically orientated ontology. It's a way of organizing things. The Propedia from the Botanica, if anyone remembers. That's very hard. Like that's academic papers get written. There are entire conferences on that. So that one, pretty much, it's a wiki, so link is probably the simplest low-level mechanic answer. Link between the two and then let the people edit them to your heart's content. The revision thing, age of documents and so forth. We run a whole stack of scripts, again, for the people who, like literally, there are people whose job it is to manage this stuff. It's not easy, but it's worth it. They get reports on documents that haven't been edited in the last three months, haven't been edited in the last six months, and often they'll just go in and slap an edit in to say, review date, blah, and that's enough to get it out of the report. And the final one was platform diversification, if that's the right phrase. Pretty much that's a cultural problem. Uh, the answer we have is our success bred more success. It got to the point where there are a few other systems. They have been told, no, you will have your home page here linked to there. So certainly you can have a link farm, and that becomes very messy. But that just needs effectively management buy-in. You, if you've got three separate strong teams, then you'll have possibly three systems. And as soon as you convince one of them to merge, then you've got two and one and the one eventually. It's a business thing. It's nothing really to do with technology. You know, why aren't we all running, you know? whatever that version of distro you've got. There were more questions, I hope. What, what's the biggest thing you would keep in a wiki? Uh, and to, I'm thinking of configuration do documents and files, things like that. Are the biggest yeah. in terms of raw size or in terms of complexity? Raw size. The, we have a 50 megabyte file upload size just for the hell of it. Um, but we link to file shares. So ISOs and all of that get linked in. The single biggest thing we have in my team is a thing called our detailed technical design, which is if we all fall dead, how do you rebuild it, down to which cables go into which ports and exact configurations on everything. So that's a monstrous thing to keep up, keep up to date. And if it weren't in a wiki, I don't know how you'd do it. I don't know how the guys who say they do it do it. Uh, over here? Yeah. Um, if I might just... Um Speak to the person who had the four questions there. The second question is uh, as to sort of um, getting an idea about what the quality of the documentation they've got in their wiki. Um, unfortunately, we use Twiki. We've used it for a number of years. 
um, to improve the quality of the documentation that we've got, um, I modified the search facility a little bit and we added a tagging regime. So every document at the top has whether or not it basically it's got a green tag, if it's good to use, mm -hmm. people have used it and proven it. Um, if people run into problems, but you know they're in the middle of a change and they don't have time to fix it, or if it's known to be out of date, it gets that tag. And when people search through the documentation, um, many versions of those tags come up against all of the search results. So if you get multiple pages that are addressing the same sorts of material, um, you can kind of decide upon which is going to be best for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was a comment. I didn't under misunderstand that as a comment only. Yeah. Cool. Ask a couple of questions. Um, do you operate a uh, structured namespace? And if so, how do you organise that? And, and who's in charge of that sort of stuff? Okay, so I'll, I'll answer for... Well, there's two areas. Um, the gateway section that I look after has uh, there's some certification documentation that gives us some structure, and there's also some physical structure, primary gateway, secondary gateway, zones of our gateway. So that gives us a fair bit. In the other one for the service desk I mentioned, they sort by resolver group. So the company that takes care of the printers, there's all the articles about printers, and that works. One thing that, you, one of the biggest things to think about is you're not locked into any structure. You can create link farms. There's nothing wrong with an ontology where people select three ways, get down to a leaf node, and then there's links to several other leaf nodes. So you're not, it's not like browsing a directory structure where it's, people don't use symbolic links in directory structures a hell of a lot. But in a wiki, there's nothing at all wrong with creating effectively a large link farm. And of course, searching is the, you know, the nice thing to do if you can make the search work. One of the things about DocuWiki I like is that every time there's a web bug effectively in every page, and when you save a page after edit, the web bug re-indexes it. So you can immediately search for the page you just created. So there's zero delay in the search index update. And that's a you know, pretty nice feature because we drive searching. Literally, the keywords that come up, they on the service desk, there's a whole bunch of tickets logged. They look at the words in those tickets and make sure those words come up in the search. And if they don't, the guys who manage that knowledge base put those words in those articles. So ontologies are incredibly hard to get right, and I can't really offer any other advice. Hi. Um, the two issues that we've got mainly with our wiki, one stems from the other. The very first one is offline editing, um, trying to actually you know, deal with issues where we don't have access to the wiki but we need to create documentation that's based off it, either going from, which is easy, just export, but going back to because then it's been edited in an offline mode. And the second is then conversion tools. So if, we, if it ends up in some other format, then converting it back. Any suggestions in that sort of direction? I mean, I know that some... Some document formats and the tools do actually have export formats for certain types of wikis. Um, I think OpenOffice actually sort of really, sort of basically supports um, things like uh, MediaWiki, but. I'm listening, I'm just. Yeah. No, that that was... Perl module. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I answer to that is. The documents you're talking about often are those that have complicated uh, visual structure. So one of the things that you sort of learn when you do a wiki is that content is king. Like, that's the old saying that they use for the media stuff. But you don't want really complicated formats of your documents. If you've got a document where people are concerned about where the page breaks occur or where tables occur, I almost suggest no, that sounds more like a contract or a marketing document don't put it in the wiki, just have a PDF or a Word doc or something. But what we've done is, well, A, a I've avoided that problem because everything's online. You have your wiki. If you want to edit it offline, don't. We do have a situation where our firewall rules, like we have partner links with organizations, we export those as Word docs, PDFs, open document, depending on the organization we're sending it to, and we give them that. 
they then edit it, and then we basically do a, the merge documents feature and then transcribe. But that's because the edits are very significant. When you're changing firewall rules, we need to know ourselves exactly what you're doing. Pretty much the answers don't, um, if you could at all avoid it. If you have to, then one of, the one of the things I can think of is, like the old school revision system, revision control systems, lock it. Make sure that their edits are the only ones. That's the only sensible thing I can think of. Because if you get you know, merging three-way against, don't do that at all if you can possibly avoid it. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, I'm afraid. Yeah. Right. We'll need to wrap it up there now because it's afternoon tea. You can join yes. me in thanking the speaker. Thank you.